all the organizers for invitation. Um, so today I'll talk about a joint work um, in progress with Roman Fitzcapnikov, Pablo Boazeda Alvarez and A.E. Class Hall. So uh, as you see from the title, there will be two parts in this talk. So there will be geometric slides, which concerning homology of affine Springer fibers, and there will be a representation side for um, representations of quantum groups. So um, let me just fix some notations. Uh, on the geometric side, I will work with the connected, simply connected semi-simple algebraic group defined over C. So this will be G. And then I'll fix a Borel subgroup inside G and the maximal torus T inside B. And then, um, so I'll denote the root datum by, uh, so here is it. So the, the character lattice for T and co-character lattice and phi is the set of roots and phi check is co-roots. And uh, what I will use very often later is actually the lattice, uh, the co-characters for T. So um, this lattice I will den denote it by lambda and then uh, this one is lambda check. Okay, and then we have the uh, we have the well group, which will be denoted as W, and the fine well group is the semi-direct product of W with this lattice lambda, and then um, and then let me go to the other side. So for representation side, I will work with representations defined over a field K, which is assumed to be algebraic closed. And um, for this talk, I will mainly concentrate in the case where uh, the characteristic of this field is zero. But actually, there will be an analog um, story for, for the situation uh, for positive characteristics. I'll make some comments later on this. Okay. And uh, so basically, the K will be the coefficient uh, when, when we are uh, taking cohomologies of right is defined over C on the left hand side. Okay. And then on representation side, I'll consider uh, I'll work with G check, which is the long lens dual group for G. And then I'll fix uh, a corresponding Borel, um, long lens dual Borel subgroup and, and the maximal torus T check. And then I will denote the corresponding Lie algebras like this, which are some standard notations. And then, uh, so we will be working with quantum groups at uh, L roots of unity. Okay, so I'll fix L to be an odd integer. And uh, I'll assume that uh, L is prime to three if G has a component, which is G2. Okay. So that's the assumptions on L. And then uh, I always denote by zeta an L roots of a primitive L groups of unity in, in K or in C. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll be studying um, quantum groups at, uh, at L groups of unity at, or just at zeta. Okay, and then, so, um, so for this reason, on the left-hand side, I will consider uh, the so-called L with a fine well group, which is just the subgroup of uh, WAF uh, consisting of W semi-direct product with L uh, dilated lattice, L lambda. Okay. And then I will denote the set of simple roots by sigma and sigma affine the affine simple roots for this root system. And then I'll write sigma L for the affine simple roots for WL. Okay, so that's uh, all the notations. Are there any questions? Okay. So uh, then let me start with the geometric part. Uh, on the geometric part, we'll be interested in the following varieties. Uh, so we'll be, we'll be considering a fine grass manion as we have seen already many times in this, in this conference. So, uh, so this is just taking uh, the points of G in the field of uh, Laurent power series and then divided by the G with uh, 
with uh, points in the formal power series. Okay, so I would just denote it like this. So it's an in scheme. And, uh, and we have an action of the maximal torus of G on it just by left at multiplication. And also we have a, I'll be considering the C star action by rotation. So by the loop rotation. So this C star action acts by, um, so if I have A belongs to C star rotation and it will just act on variable Z by multiplying it by A. Okay. And uh, so as we know the fixed points of the torus in the FN Grassmannian is parametrized by the uh, co-characters of T. So this was my lattice lambda. And then I had this zeta, which is uh, L through of unity that we have fixed. Okay. And then I view uh, zeta as an element in this uh, C rota uh, loop rotation torus. And therefore, it generates an action of a cyclic group of order L on, on the FN Grassmannian. I just take the fixed points of that uh, cyclic group. Okay. And then you can do the computation. So uh, the thing is clear that if you just take the zeta point, fixed point in this group, you will get the group which is G, you just raise the power of your variable uh, to the power L. And so this is a group. And, and, uh, and when you take the fixed points in the FN Grassmannian, you will get a union of uh, partial affine flag varieties um, for, for this group. Okay, so maybe let me explain the notation here. Um, so we had this lattice lambda and on it, you have naturally an action of this, this L the fine wild group WL. And uh, so you, um, so the, the components will be the, let's say, uh, yeah, connected components of this, this thing will be indexed by the uh, WL orbits in lambda. And then, uh, and, and then the thing here is just uh, a partial flag variety, which is a quotient of, uh, of this group. And by a parahoric subgroup whose uh, type is determined by this, this element version here. So, so if I repeat an element in lambda and you consider all the simple uh, affine reflections, which fix fix it and, and then you, you, uh, it gives you a subset inside the simple um, affine, the set of simple affine roots. And, and this, gives, this defines you a parahoric subgroup. Okay, so this is, um, this is actually an easy computation. You just look at how this group acting on fixed points and modulo stabilizer and you, and you get this. Okay. Is there any questions? Maybe I'll give an example. So, uh, well, yeah, in just uh, some special cases. If Varpisa uh, is a regular element, that is, it's it's not it's not lying on any hyperplanes for affine reflections. Then uh, the set will just be empty, and so P uh, this Perihari subgroup will be the Irohari subgroup for G uh, ZL. And in this case, uh, the corresponding component will just be a affine flag variety. And uh, on the contrary, if varp is zero, then it will be fixed by all the finite simple roots. So, uh, so this set will be the set of finite simple roots. And in this case, the parahoric subgroup will be G uh, bra double bracket ZL. Okay. And you see in this case, the corresponding component is, uh, is an affine Grassmannian. So the same as before, just we raise the formal, the, power, the, the variable Z to Z to the power of L. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is the affine Grassmannian. 
and zeta fixed points in it. And then uh, we will be interested in affine Springer fibers, actually in a very particular type of affine Springer fibers. So uh, for example, this has been mentioned by Eugene Gorski in his course. Um, so uh, the type we'll consider is we, we first true, uh, fix a regular semi-simple element in G. So uh, we may just suppose it, assume it's, it lies inside the Lie algebra of the torus T. Okay, and then uh, the element we'll consider is z to the power of l minus one times this semi regular semi simple element. Okay. So in particular, it's an element in G uh, in the Lie algebra G double uh, parenthesis z and uh, and this is irrelevant. Um, and so the affine Springer fiber we're considering is actually uh, kind of gamma fixed points in the affine Grassmannian. So concretely, this means you take the points in the affine Grassmannian, which is represented by uh, cosets for this group. Um, and, and you require that if you take the adjoint action of G inverse on gamma, so G inverse gamma G, uh, you require this element is so again an element in the uh, Lie algebra of this parahoric subgroup. Okay. So, um, so this is uh, a definition for a fine Springer fiber inside the F and Grassmannian. Okay, and um, and again, we'll be considering the zeta point fix in this affine Springer fiber. So, uh, so you see, gamma is, uh, comes from the action. It's the um, derivative for 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 the torus action or T K action. So, so like T uh, double parenthesis Z action. So it commutes with the action of zeta. So we can first take uh, zeta fixed points and then take a, take gamma fixed points. So uh, using the decomposition we have explained just now, uh, this part will just be union of uh, these affine, like partial affine flag varieties and you taking gamma fixed point in it. Okay. And uh, I'll just make a remark here for, to explain why I'm considering uh, this element. So, um, so actually you see from here that requiring uh, this condition, a joint G inverse of gamma belongs to this, is equivalent to saying that uh, I require Z power L times S um, at G minus one belongs to Z times G. So this is the radical of this uh, this parabolic Lie algebra, so uh, you can check that uh, after taking the um, each of the components, then this gamma fixed point is the same as uh, taking uh, the points G uh, the cosets P bar P uh, cosets for inside this partial flag variety and you, 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 you add this condition, which means you, you, you ask this elements belongs to the radical of this uh, parahor, the Lie algebra of this or uh, subgroup. Okay, maybe I'll just write for the, for the Lie algebra. Okay, so this is, this is actually what usually referred to as uh, affine spatation varieties. Um, okay, and here I just don't make the difference of the terminology. Okay. And, uh, and in this term, you can see that up to changing uh, ZL with, with Z, this is the same as just uh, considering a fine Springer fiber for, for Z times S for this type of, of elements. Okay, so this will be the or rather this will be the main object of study for today's talk. And let me give you some properties of uh, this in scheme. So first of all, uh, 
Uh, actually, it's it's an in scheme, but it's um, it's locally a finite dimension. That means it has it has a infinite many of irreducible components, but each of the irreducible components is, uh, has finite dimension. And then um, you have um, so we had an action of the torus on the F1 Grassmannian. And since gamma is an element in, in T uh, of Z, so uh, it commutes with, with T. Okay. So therefore, uh, the T action still, uh, T still acts on these fixed points. And you can check that the T fixed points in this affine Springer fiber is the same as the T points in the F and Grassmannian, and this is uh, just a lambda, as we have explained. Secondly, um, so this uh, variety satisfy what is so-called GKM condition, uh, which is, so if you take two fixed points inside uh, the affine Springer fiber, then there is at most one T orbit, one, uh, one dimensional T orbits connecting them. And um, third, thirdly, this this uh, Springer fiber has a, a fun, admits a fine paving. Um, so we know that um, if you take the uh, orbits for you, a hard subgroup leaving a fine paving for the F1 Grassmannian, and you're just uh, intersecting that a fine paving with this fixed points uh, sub scheme, then you get a fine paving here. Okay. So in particular, um, from this, you, uh, you know that the cohomology of this space is even, and uh, in particular, it satisfies uh, what is called a GKM condition. And, um, and so we know that in this, um, in this situation, we have a combinatorial description of the equivalent cohomology of this, this space. So more concretely, uh, this combinatorial uh, condition is given as follows. So uh, we can describe this ring as follows. So it's the same as um, the following set. So whose elements are just um, tuples indexed by lambda, which is fixed points in this, in this, in this scheme. And uh, for each, each fixed point, you associate an element in the equivalent, T equivalent cohomology of the point. And then you add in the condition that whenever you have a one dimensional orbit connecting two points X and Y, you ask uh, these two elements, AX and AY, their difference is divisible by alpha, which is an element here. So this is the same as, as a P star. So alpha is, a, is an element here. So um, this is the condition you put for each one dimensional um, orbit. Here, uh, the alpha is actually the character for that one dimensional torus. So um, in other words, kernel of alpha is the D algebra of the stabilizer of the, okay. the co-dimension one torus. Okay. So, um, so we have a nice description of the equivalent cohomology of this uh, affine Springer fiber given here. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, can I ask a question? So sure. for uh, these GRS gammas, uh, is it in general true they satisfy the GKM condition? Because I thought GKM had to uh, use the extended torus, wait. Or so LGBT. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, if you don't take the gamma fixed points, then you need to take uh, the T cross rotation torus to get GKM condition. So, um, so the GKM condition is not true for the F1 Grassmann itself or the zeta fixed points. But here, what is remarkable is if you take this affine Springer fiber, then uh, you, you don't need the rotation torus C star. It, it, it will be satisfied for only the finite torus. Okay, and, and that's in general true, like for gamma equals S times whatever, Z to the L minus. Yes, 
for this type of gamma, I think it is always true. Uh, wait, just hold on. Um, yeah, I thought because when L is like maybe, at least no, yeah. um, three, then, then you need. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, uh, no, I don't think. No, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, it's I, I think it's only true for actually gamma equals to one. So I'm I'm basically in a gamma equals yeah. ZS situation. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I yeah. just wanted to check. Yeah. Are there other questions? Okay, um maybe let me give an example. So uh, let's consider the case of SL2. And I pick, for example, L equals to three. Okay. So in this case, um, lambda will just be uh, two z. Okay. And um, so if I identify the weight lattice with z, then lambda is the root lattice, so it's two z. And uh, so if we consider um, lambda quotient by the alpha while group action. Uh, then there will be actually two orbits. Okay. So, uh, so you just look, so it's, uh, it's represented by points in this, in this echo between zero and, and three. And so uh, there will be a regular orbit uh, corresponding to the point two. Okay. And then uh, there will be this single, uh, this is a singular orbit, which is uh, the orbit for zero. And uh, in this case, if you look at, so for uh, bar P2, as, I, as we said, so this is, since it's regular, this is really just the alpha and flag variety. And uh, in this case, when we take the gamma fixed points, we get an infinite chain of P1. So uh, meaning that you have, you have fixed points indexed by the orbits of two, so they're in bijection with uh, with WL, and then you will have a P1 connecting the nearby uh, fixed points. And then uh, in this case, um, flag var P0 will be, as we said, this is the von Grassmannian. And if you take the gamma fixed point, you're as I said, so this is correspond to taking a fine uh, spatation variety. And in this case, you just get a bunch of points. Okay, so, so this is uh, just uh, all, the, all the points here. Okay. And, uh, and so the cohomology, um, well, the, cohomology, the equivalent cohomology of the whole space is the direct sum of the equivalent cohomology for each of the components. And uh, so for, well, it's very easy to compute in this case. Um, so in the first case, it's, the, it's just equivalent, uh, co T equivalent cohomology of, of P1 and, um, and of uh, this, this infinite chain of P1 and, um, and right. And so uh, maybe just one more remark that this, this description I gave here, when you restrict to each of this orbit, you can identify the fixed points with this, the quotient of a fan while group because it uh, acts transitively on, on each of these orbits. And, and uh, so quotient by the corresponding type for this uh, parallel subgroup. And then, uh, so the one dimensional orbits like how to detect when there is a one dimensional orbit between two fixed points, this can be, can be uh, said very explicitly in terms of echoes. So, so in the case of SL2, you just see that there are uh, one dimensional orbits between nearby echoes, and this can be generalized to, uh, to, to arbitrary type. Okay. okay, so this is the example for SL2. And uh, then he also mentioned there are some uh, symmetries on the cohomology of these affine Springer fibers. Um, so, so uh, meaning that there will be a left uh, action of the affine while group and the, and the right action. 
Uh, so this the the easiest way to define them is the following. So you consider the uh, restriction of equivalent cohomology to the set of fixed points. Okay, and uh, so this is a subring, and uh, and on the right, this uh, since the fixed points are isolated, this is just uh, functions on the set of fixed points lambda with coefficient in this in this ring. And then you can define uh, two actions, which so where the the left action is just uh, so you have a fun while group acting on, on lambda, and you just let it um, act. So so you just uh, it sends this tuple a x to um, a y x, but uh, at at the places y x you twist. A by by the action of y on on this, okay, on the co equivalent cohomological point. So here the lattice parts act tri uh, trivially, and you just have the w action on it. And uh, for the right action, you um, for the right action, um, you, you just translate the. Maybe I should write. A bit confused. Um, for the uh, for for the right action, it uh, basically it only acts on the on the lambda fixed points um, by translation. But uh, I'm a bit confused here <laughs> because uh, usually if we look at the, for each, like if, if it's on a regular block, block then uh, it's just the right action of WL on itself. And uh, here on lambda, I, I forget how to write it properly. But, um, but, but it's possible to define well. Um, to modifying my formula here, it's, it should be well defined, and and the two action commute. Um, so um, so in any case, we can define a left and right of our well group action on this space, and you can check that it preserve this this subring. Okay, so you get you get two actions here. Um, actually. Um, there are ways, so you can uh, describe these actions more geometrically. Uh, the right action is actually the, the, the Springer action. So we know, um, like, uh, there, in the finite case, there are a fine, there are a wild group action, action, acting on cohomology of, of fine Springer fiber, of Springer fibers. And so here is, uh, there's a similar situation. So you have, uh, you can construct an action of the Van Wild group on the cohomology of the Springer fiber, and um, and for the left action, it actually comes from uh, uh, some symmetries of the variety itself. So um, so the lattice part, it comes from the fact that uh, on the Springer fiber, as we explained, you have the action of this group. So uh, it has a continuous part, which is T and it acts trivially, but it also has a lattice part, which is uh, L lambda. And, uh, and it gives an action on the cohomology. And then uh, the W action should come from some, some monodromy action. Um, right, so this, this two, two, these two actions can be described uh, geometrically. Okay, um, so these are the symmetries, and then, and then uh, we can consider also the restriction from the um, cohomology of the Van Grassmannian, just the zeta fixed points, to the cohomology of the this fine Springer fiber, and uh, just by restriction because this is a subscheme, and uh, it turns out that the lens inside this invariant parts for um, for the left action of this upon group WL. Okay. 
and can, you can try to study uh, this space. So uh, one of the theorem we prove in this in this project is that uh, we have an est estimation of the dimension of a like an upper bound for the dimension of this space, and uh, this is smaller or equal to h plus one to the power of rank of g, and h is the Coxeter number, and we can prove that this is actually an inequality in type A. And by con by consequence, uh, well, it's part of the argument in the proof shows that uh, this is surjective in type A. And uh, so this equality was also proved uh, in general by uh, Pablo Bazeta, Alvarez, and and uh, Ivan Losev. So um, like they used our arguments for this this inequality, and they proved the other uh, inequality. So uh, which allows them to prove it in general. Okay. And another comment is that. Uh, so people are also interested in the so-called elliptic affine Springer fiber, where uh, instead of this z, you take uh, you take a, another um, regular semi-simple uh, topological nilpotent element in the affine Lie algebra, and so I just write down the an expression of it. So I think I wrote it down for the, uh, every, everyone here should be raised to the L if you want to work with the L form. Um, so, um, so just in front of the root, of root vector of height h minus one, you put a z square and, and for a, like negative roots, you put a, put a z in front of it. Um, yeah, actually it's not very important, but, um, but what is well known is that the cohomology of the elliptic fiber um, is precisely the, the right hand side. And uh, it was also proven um, that the, I think by Yun and, and Oblom, Oblom and Yun, that uh, you have the cohomology of flag variety, affine flag varieties uh, maps surjectively onto, uh, onto cohomology of this elliptic fiber. And uh, so you have you, you have these two maps are just restrictions, and in type A you can show that uh, it actually uh, factorizes, and and you get a, and you get an isomorphism of vector spaces between uh, the cohomology of the elliptic fiber and the cohomology of this uh, homogeneous speed fiber um, taking the WL invariance. And also uh, one can show in type A actually this W action is trivial and it's the same as the, the fixed points for the, for the lattice. Okay. So I think this ends the geometric parts. I'll pause for questions. Okay. If there's no questions, I will go on to the quantum group part. Um, so, here we go. So um, let Q just be a formal variable. And then we have the quantum group associated with the, as I said, Lawrence dual group G check. And so uh, this is the uh, quantum group defined over the field, rational field K um, parentheses Q and generated you know, by EIFI and K lambda and satisfying the usual uh, relations for quantum groups. Okay. And then uh, inside, inside here, we'll, we'll pick, there are some different integral forms uh, defined over this ring. Okay. And uh, the most well-known integral forms are, one of them is due to Katz, uh, the Concini cats. So this is, you just pick uh, the sub algebra over this ring generated by the standard generators, EI and phi and, and K lambda. And there's another integral form, which is uh, very often studied, is due to Lustig. So this is generated by divided powers of the generators. And so we have EI, uh, so this is divided power, so EI divided by quantum uh, and factorial. So, um, so EI uh, 
so, so yeah, so this is Lucic's uh, quantum group. And actually, in between, you can consider some intermediate uh, integral forms. So you can take um, divided power version on, on one half of the quantum group and, uh, and, and take the other one on the other half. So for example, here I denote by EQ mix P is you take the divided powers for the EIs and for the, for the KIs or K lambdas. And, um, but for on the, on the negative part for Fs, you just take the usual generators Fi. And, uh, and also you can uh, do similar thing, which I did UQ mix N, which means uh, on the Carton part, I, I just take the usual K lambda without divided powers, but I take divided powers only on the, on the EIs. Okay, so I have um, these four forms of, of integral forms. And, uh, uh, and it turns out that the, these forms in the middle have been uh, recently studied, for example, by, by Dennis Giskory, and they have some very interesting representation theory um, related to uh, affine the algebras. Okay, so anyway, um, we have these four algebras and, and we can specialize, specialize them to rules of unity. So for any of them, so the star denote by all the subscripts. And, and if I replace Q by a zeta, I just mean specializing, um, specializing Q to zeta in this way. Okay. Um, right, and the small quantum group. So the small quantum group is, uh, so you have, a, you have math induced by, by these inclusions. When you specialize to zeta, there are no more inclusions, but you still have maps. And the small quantum group is the image of the cast to continue quantum group inside the loosely quantum group. So there's another way to describe it. Um, so um, inside the center of the cast to continue quantum group, there is a part which is often referred to as the Frobenio center or the L center. So this is generated by the elements uh, EI to the power of L, FI to the power of L, and K of L lambda. And as a subring, it's the same as the coordinate ring of the Poisson dual group. Okay. And, um, and, and one can check that the small quantum group is just, uh, you take the cast to Concini quantum group and you specialize this part of the center to, to K. Like you quotient by its augmentation ideal, meaning that EIL is sent to zero, FIL is sent to zero, and KL and the sent to one. Okay. And so this is a finite dimensional algebra. And uh, so from this perspective, we can also consider some deformation of this algebra. So uh, instead of just specializing to K, you can specialize into, for example, function on the torus. Um, yeah, completed at one, there's some technical issues that we just ignore it. So, um, so this is basically you specialize EI FI to zero, but you keep the, the K L lambdas. Or rather I should write like one plus um, the, like I write K as an exponent exponential uh, expansion. And uh, that's the meaning of the, of the uh, completion that one, but let me just <laughs> ignore this. Um, and also you can define another uh, algebra. So E zeta B, which is uh, you, you deform further that uh, you consider, you just specialize the central characters to uh, functions on B minus, which means you just specialize EIL to zero, but you keep all the Fs and, and Ks. Okay. So these two are some deformation of this small quantum group U zeta. And uh, so we're mainly interested in this one. And, and here you can identify the completion of these functions on the, on the L torus with the completion of the function on the Lie algebra at zero and um, 
and identify it with the cohomology, T equivalent cohomology of a point. And this ring will be used very often, so denoted by S. Okay, so um, these are all the algebras I will be considering. Are there questions? Okay, so then let me tell you what kind of representations I'll be interested in. So um, we'll be interested in the following representation. So recall our lambda was uh, the co-characters for T and the characters for T dual. So for the loose quantum group, I was just interested in finite dimensional modules over, over them. So for example, this is uh, the symbols are indexed by, by dominant plates. And uh, for the small quantum group, we'll be considering uh, the so-called the L lambda graded U zeta modules. So yeah, so I consider finite dimensional L lambda graded U zeta modules um, such that, so um, yeah, basically in U zeta, you have the, you have the Cartan part, but it's this, it's like, it's lambda mod L lambda graded. And sorry, so it's, uh, yeah, like you, you don't have the whole torus action, but you, you uh, you only have them mod L. So, so uh, when I consider lambda graded using the modules, I, I add the torus action back. So this this category, you can think of it as a sort of U zeta T uh, modules. So so you in particular require that the uh, the U zeta action and the and the lattice action is uh, grading is compatible. And you can do the same thing for uh, for u zeta t and u zeta b. So for this deformed algebras, you can also define lambda graded modules over over them. Although you need to replace finite dimensional by uh, finite generated over the space rings. Okay. And so this is mostly for the small. Uh, and then for this mixed version. Uh, I define here for this mixed version. Uh, well, considering their category O, so uh, so so you consider again LM the graded uh, modules, and you act you ask the positive parts act locally unipotently. Okay, as uh, what we do very often for category O, and. Uh, Right, and then for, for all these categories, you can study uh, standard objects. For example, here you have baby Verma objects and here you have Verma modules, you have wow modules, and you can, um, you can study their relationship under different kinds of functors. So, uh, so here, let me explain uh, what kind of relations you have between these categories. So you see by definition that uh, this O mixed N so just let me recall this U mix N has a has this Cartan part. So it also has it's a it's linear over over this ring S here. Okay. So uh, so this O mix N is the S linear category, and this U zeta T mod lambda is also the S linear category. And actually, the U zeta B is just a um, the category O here is you just specialize S to K. Okay. So, uh, and, and U zeta mod lambda is the specialization of U zeta T lambda uh, by specializing this S to K. Okay. So you should think of these two categories as deformations of, of these two categories. And then, um, and then from this category to to wrap you uh, lucid. So let me make, make a remark on this category. So, uh, so by karstan lucid equivalence, we know that uh, the representation of U zeta lucid is equivalent as a tensor category to this uh, affine parabolic category or um, just karstan lucid category. Okay. And uh, so recently there is, there is conjecture by Gasgory and I think it, 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 
I'm not certain of, of the current status, but I think it's proven by his students that this omics B is derived equivalent to uh, the affine category O. Okay, so in other words, if you want to extend the usual Kashtan-Lustig equivalence to uh, like from this parabolic category to the whole category O, uh, this is the correct object to consider. Well, the, the usual, you can also define a, a category O for Lustig quantum group, but it turns out that's not the correct object. So that's why uh, I think it's interesting uh, to study this, these categories. In any case, um, so you, for for this category, you can you can take you take an object here. You can take a maximal quotient, uh, which belongs to um, which is integrable over Lustig's quantum group. So this gives you a functor uh, gamma, which um, yeah, which is adjoined to some sort of uh, restriction functor. And then, uh, and then from representation of quantum group, you can restrict to the to the small quantum group. Okay, so you have functor like this. And finally, uh, so there is also a functor connecting uh, U mix n, O mix n, and this uh, deformed G one T modules by uh, first restricting this U mix n to the U zeta b I defined. And then and then specialize to use it at t, but I think that's too technical. Let me just uh, ignore this uh, this part. Uh, so so we have a commutative diagram of functors between the the categories I've introduced. So uh, one so the first result we prove is a computation of the center of the ca this category here. So this is the deformed uh, u zeta module category. And um, and what we say is that its center is isomorphic as a ring to the equivalent cohomology of the affine Springer fiber. And before, okay. So this was the object we studied in the first part of the talk. And uh, and the ideas of the proof is the following. So we follow kind of GKM description. And uh, you can check that. Uh, so this, as I explained, this is a S linear category. If you extend the scalar to the fraction field of S, it actually becomes semi-simple. And it seems its simple objects are baby Verma modules, which are indexed by the by lambda, which is the fixed points here. So if you have a semi-simple object, then by this category by sure lemma, your um, center is just a project. But it's a, just a product of scalars on the on the simple modules, so therefore uh, we can identify the center of this localized category with the co equivalent cohomology of the fixed points and also uh, localized to the fraction field. Okay, and then after this, you can look at the co-dimension one situation where. Uh, you consider a localization for each root, you consider a localization of S where you invert all the roots which are not uh, equal to, all the positive roots which are not equal to alpha. And then uh, you look at the representation side, if you localize to this, this ring, then your category is actually equivalent to um, a, a direct sum of, uh, of the same kind of categories, <laughs> just rank one group, so for SO2 or PSO2. And, uh, and there you can do an explicit calculation by writing down all the projectives and maps between them, and you can compute the center of that category. And so this, this you can check by hand, it matches the GKM description. And finally, uh, using some, some nice properties of the center, you can check it's actually uh, equals the intersection of this co-dimension one localization inside the this big, uh, big localization. Yeah. Bengal, we we have a question in the chat. Can you say yeah. it or? Uh, let me check. Yeah, I I should be able to say. It. Yeah, I I I, I yeah. It, Do you have a conceptual explanation? This proof is somehow reduction to rank one. 
is fine, yeah. but uh, yeah. somehow if you have a purely reason why this, these two wings should be isomorphic, then it's, I think it's better. Mm, yes, so, uh, well, uh, I, I think it is something like, so uh, it, it's better to explain it in, in terms of, um, like for in character SP, this U zeta will correspond to this group G1, which is the kernel of the Frobenius. And, um, and you, can, you can iterate this procedure. And in, in, in some sense, this, this uh, module category, so it should correspond to this Springer fiber, which is the one uh, which is like, uh, it, it, is, it is not the most generic one, but just the one after. Um, yeah, I don't have a, a conceptual proof. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, maybe I don't require proof, but certain explanation, maybe. Right. Proof yeah. is too much. Pro proof might be too much, but somehow right. it looks a little bit mysterious to me. Um, no, I agree it's very mysterious, but on the other hand side, uh, so the, the structure of this G1T modules, uh, yeah, like in many aspects, it's, it's related to this Springer fiber. Oh, it's maybe better to say that, uh, so Roman has, um, I think with Yun and uh, Michael McBrain and, and maybe with Pablo also, they, so the moral now is to say that this category is causal dual to um, to microlocal sheaves on this uh, fine Springer fiber, and uh, you know probably there is a big picture where um, you can use this. Uh, you know, in the finite situation, you have causal dual for for cotangent of flag variety, and then you can deduce information about a causal dual for, um, for Springer fibers relating to, to this parabolic singular duality. And I think there should be a, some, some kind of similar picture going on, which tells you that the geometry responsible for this, this uh, small quantum group is this, uh, this, this particular fiber. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, right, uh, just, uh, it, it might be related to some kind of 4D uh, syntactic duality, but, but I don't know uh, what to say more about that. Okay. Uh, in any case, so we have, we, we can prove this isomorphism and, uh, and if you specialize the scalar, so if you specialize S2K, and on the cohomology side, we know, uh, you know, this cohomology is pure. And, and so this is just uh, the usual cohomology of, of the, um, of the Springer fiber. But uh, there's a very complicated issue on the center um, that we, the, the construction of the center is not functorial. So if you specialize here, you only have a map into the center of this non-deformed category, but a priori, oh, it's not clear. This is this is surjective. So, um, so we can so a, a straightforward corollary of the previous theorem is that you have an embedding of the cohomology um, inside the center of the non-deformed category, and uh, one of the conjecture. I have it, we, like we have it at the end is like, this should be an isomorphism, but for the moment I uh, cannot prove it. And right, and the remark is that, remember we had this decomposition of this affine Springer fiber into, into components. And actually this matches well on the representation side. On the representation side, you have decomposition of this category into blocks. Um, just by the Harichanda central characters. And uh, so, so, so this is the same decomposition. Okay. okay. And uh, another theorem in, which is not 
whose proof is not completely written down uh, at the moment. So, right, theorem in progress is that uh, the center of this O mix N uh, should be the equivalent cohomology of this zeta fixed point in the Van Grassmannian. And, uh, and the center of this O mix B uh, is equal to the cohomology, like the non equivalent cohomology. So, so in this case, the specialization should, should go well, as in the case of usual category O. And then, uh, so we have a commutative diagram where on the right hand side, you have the, remember, you have this restriction map from the cohomology of the affine Grassmannian to this uh, affine Springer fiber, which lands in uh, the WL fixed part. And on the left, you can, you can use the relations between these categories to produce a map between the center of this O mix B and the center of U zeta lambda modus. And the statement, so this, this map is defined algebraically and, and uh, you can check that, like we can check this is a, you have a commutative diagram like this. Banga? Yeah. Uh, there is a question in the Q and A. Maybe you can. Uh... There are certain variety X alpha such that. Uh... Oh yes, I think. Uh, uh, yes, I think X alpha is just uh, instead of taking a fixed point by T, you take. Uh, the fixed point by this co-dimension one torus. So I had a co-dimension for, for alpha. Um, yeah, you just uh, define a co-dimension tor one torus by the kernel of, of alpha, and then uh, you take fixed point by that. I think, yeah, I think that is, that is X alpha. Okay. Okay, and finally, um, there is uh, yeah. Uh, finally, there is a quantum Frobenius map from this uh, Lustig quantum group to uh, the enveloping algebra of G, maybe com with completion and uh, its kernel is. You can realize small quantum group at its kernel, and therefore using the adjoint action of a quantum group on, on itself, you can um, produce an action of the group G check on the center of the small quantum group. And uh, so, yeah, so we have two conjectures. So one, the first one I have already mentioned, uh, we hope the center of the non-deformed category matches the cohomology of this um, affine Springer fiber. And the second one, we expect that if you take the G invariant part in the center of uh, U zeta, uh, this is isomorphic to the WL invariance in the cohomology of this affine Springer fiber. So remember we had some estimation of the dimension of this space. And this, this space, for example, in type A is the same, has the same dimension as the diagonal co-invariance. And actually um, this work this whole work was, in, was motivated by a conjecture of Lechowska and Chi, which conjecture the center, which gives this conjecture in type A, this G, G check invariance of the center of a small quantum group has the same dimension as diagonal co-invariance. Okay. Yeah, and let me just mention briefly that uh, I explained there are these two actions of uh, a final well group on the on the cohomology and there you can also construct them on the representation side where uh, the left action is just by some uh, again by some categorical symmetry you have the l lambda just acting on shifting the grading and uh, and uh, the finite well group action acts by some by some twists um, and then the right W action is given, is induced by some translation functors. So on, on U zeta mod lambda, you have different kinds of translation functors between blocks and their bi-joint functors 
and there is a standard way uh, due to Einstein to define some operators on the center and you can check that you get a WL action on the center in that way. And these two actions are, are compatible under this identification um, with, the, with the geometric action. Yeah, and maybe a final remark is that, as I mentioned, for if you take K to be a field of positive coefficient, then a large part of the story uh, is still true. And in this case, uh, the U zeta module, this category is just uh, what is so-called G1T modules. Yeah, but but this part is maybe uh, less clear. Like this statement is goes the same, but uh, the second part it's uh, more complicated in positive characteristic. Okay, let me end there. Thank you. Any further question, Mark? So in positive characteristic, maybe you need a field of characteristic L. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this uh, parity, localization parity sheaves and localization to the fixed point. This work mm -hmm. of uh, Rich and Williamson. Mm -hmm. So that would relate the, maybe the cohomology of the fixed point to the cohomology of the whole alpha and Grassmannian. Mm -hmm. can, that, can that be helpful or help understand um, I think it's related. So I, I think what they study is uh, is the model for representation of G of the group in characters of T. So so their story is uh, is like the causal deal between uh, representation of G in positive characteristic and then this this parity sheaves on the on the uh, of Van Grassmannian and and the zeta fixed points is related to the to the block composition. Um, Just to describe this uh, cohomology of the fixed point locus in characteristic L. Yes. Uh, can you recover this description in terms of this uh, localization in terms of the cohomology of the whole of Van Grassmannian? Uh, you mean uh, you mean localization with respect to this mu L action right. uh, with with a coefficient in positive characteristic? Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think there is something going on there, but I haven't uh, looked this into details. So it turns out that in in positive characteristic. Um, there should be more structures on on this on this range, yeah. But but I don't know what to say for the moment. Any more question? Uh, I have a question. So you consider the fiber of a gamma and also the whole variety. And what happens if you consider more general fiber in the algebraic side? I mean. I don't know. I uh, more. What do you mean by more general fiber? I mean, you, you can take a, any element from the real. I mean, that is too 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 exotic question. Yes, I think uh, I, I think it, uh, it it should be related to some kinds of W algebras, but uh, mm, I, I don't know what to. I I, I like. So you have two versions of the algebra, and you have some 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 other algebra appearing. For Sorry, say it again. I I didn't understand. So, for your can you say it again? You, so you you have the in the algebra side you have two algebras corresponding yeah. to the the whole variety and the fiber over gamma, and if yes. you consider more more general gamma then you should get more uh, new, new algebras. Yes. It should be the center of a new algebra. And you, you explain, but you mentioned double algebra. So you said that I, this new algebra is a double algebra. I think it should relate it to some kinds of W algebras. Uh, uh, if you take the finite analog of this, like 
On, then on the top, it's similar as center of category O. Like the, the variety and the, and the algebra here are, are sort of causal dual to each other. I see. I see. Mm, yeah. So, oh. so I expect if you change gamma, there should be some sort of W algebras showing up on, on this uh -huh. hand side. Uh -huh. I see. I see. It's reason. Okay. Thank you. Well, maybe, yeah, let's thank Peng again. Oh. I missed it. There is a question in the yeah, Q&A, so then we will thank you again for the third time. Uh, no one over. Yeah, so, uh, so, so yeah, um, for this elliptic fiber, um, yeah, somehow you can, you can think of um, this split fiber as um, you, you can some, somehow, uh, let me just remember in which direction. If, if my, my memory is correct, you have, uh, you, can, you can degenerate this uh, gamma prime to this, to this split fiber gamma. So, um, so it is possible to write down a map from the cohomology of this elliptic fiber to uh, to to this fiber we consider, such that this this diagram commute. Um, but in general, it's hard to say much about this map. So in general, um, it's it's hard to say whether it's surjective or or isomorphism. Here we prove its isomorphism is really um, using. Some argument of Carson Oblomkov, we can show uh, the image here is contained uh, in this part. And so, and then you use this, this on, on the dimensions, we can show it's isomorphic. But in general, I think like we don't have a theoretical argument which, which gives um, this isomorphism. Okay. So I think now we can really. Thank you again.